Hello and welcome back to another of my episodes of PS Crafty DIY. Let me show you how I made my first ever bandsaw box. Well, it's not perfect as I made few mistakes along the way, but I learned from them. And if you watch this video, hopefully you will learn something too. So let's get started. Step number one, prepare your blank. First I take a slice from this rock hole. I'll square off the leading edge and chop it down to size. Then I have to rip it down to 120mm since this is the maximum throat capacity of my band saw. I set up my saw with half inch 40 pi blade for resawing. If you are wondering how I set up my band saw for accurate cuts, follow the link at the top and watch my detailed video. Right, let's resaw it. I'll use first three pieces for this band saw box and the rest I'll use for another one, which will be featured in separate video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. Now I can make a glue up. Let's just sandwich these two pieces of scrap plywood I fished out from a wood skip at work. I'll save some of the expensive Iroko and throw in an interesting design feature at the same time. It was no longer good as a form for a machine, but it's still great for my tinkering. After I've let this set overnight, I'll square off the edges. Now viewers discretion is advised. The following few steps are not really necessary for oddly shaped bandsaw box. But since I've built a fully functioning surface planer in the past and recently swapped my homemade table saw for this new toy, I might as well have a play. And there we have it, nice and square. I can glue on my pattern now. I put masking tape on the wood first and then glue the pattern on the top using crafts glue. It's a lot less messy when it comes to peeling the pattern off. And that's my blank ready. Step number two, cut out the outside shape of my back saw box. The saw is set with 316 of an inch 6 TPI blade for this cut as well as for all the following cuts. Step number three, cut off the back piece. Well, as you can see, I got a bit carried away, went ahead and cut out the inside shell instead. Silly mistake really, as the seam at the back will now be visible. So if you cut your buckle first, you'll end up with the box much nicer than mine. Step number 4. Cut out the inside for the shell. But since I've already done that, I will cut off my back from whatever I've got left and try to do some magic later, as I refuse to scrap this now. Step number 5. Cut out all the drawers. However, I'd like the tree in the middle of my bandsaw box to be raised above the drawers and the shell slightly. So here is a little trick. Using double-sided tape, I'll glue on an extra piece of plywood and then cut my drawers out. This way I'll end up with an extra tree shaped exactly the same as the tree in the middle of my bandsaw box. And that's what I'm going to use to make it sit proud above the rest. I try to stay on the line with my cut, but if I ever come off slightly, there is not much to worry about. I'll just find the quickest and the smoothest way to come back in. No one except from me will ever know. Well, everyone else who's watching this video now, I suppose. And there we have it. I'll save that for later. Step number six. Cut the front and the back face of each drawer. I'm marking mine with numbers and letters, so I know what is what. Step number seven, cut out the inside of each drawer. I'm using the compass to draw my line for each cut and mark the orientation of each drawer to avoid cutting it upside down. This is a perfect opportunity to smooth out the inside of the drawers. I'm using a combination of oscillating sander and rotary tool. I got a Sandra second hand, sold as a non-runner. Luckily, I managed to fix it. Check out my video. I'll also copy the shape of the inside of each drawer, front and back, onto the self-adhesive velvet fabric sheet at this stage. This will be used for the lining of the inside of the drawers later on. Step number eight, glue up, finishing work and completion. Right, since I've already sanded the inside of drawers, let's glue the front and back faces back onto them and let them set overnight. Moving on to band saw box shell, I'll sand it from the inside gently and try to get rid of the saw marks. It's important not to overdo it with sanding here, 
as the gaps between the drawers and the shell would be too large. Next step is to glue the buck piece onto the shell. But as you know, I've messed up in step 3 a little and my buck piece is actually slightly smaller. So now I'm having to glue it inside the shell instead of gluing it onto the back of the shell where it's meant to be for the seam to be less visible. Well, I'm sure you have cut it out step 3 correctly and you won't have to deal with this mess. I'll try to pull it in with clamps and fill the gaps with a mixture of glue and sawdust. Let's do some work with the tree. I'll glue the back piece on, clamp it down, and once it's set, I'll clean it up on the sander. I was a little skeptical about rounding off the edges on my routing table, so I reached for my rotary tool again. And apply the same method for rounding off the edges on the shell. Now I'm ready to glue the tree back into the shell. I'll pull the sides in with two clamps and clamp the lot from the top using a third clamp. I will then fill the gaps with the glue and sawdust mix and once it's all set, I can clean it up on the sander. Next step is to sand the drawers. Again, I need to watch how much material I can take off as trying to avoid the gaps between the drawers and the shell being too large. Once I finish sanding on the machine, I will apply sanding sealer and sand everything down by hand using 400 grit. Moving on to making the drawer handles. I have decided to use this wave zero of cut for these. Cut the shapes out of my scroll saw and tweak them up with my rotary tool. Once I got all six of them, I'll seal them with sanding sealer and do some more hand sanding, I'm afraid. Right, let's pop them on. I'm using 5 minute epoxy for that. Well, I think I'm ready to apply some finish on. I'm using polymerized linseed oil. Watch the grain on the Iroko pop. Beautiful. Once the wood takes what it needs, I'll wipe the excess off, let it dry overnight and apply some beeswax polish. Look at that! I'm truly amazed how this turned out. I think I need to do projects like this more often, as this is a little different to my usual work with old pallets and scraps. Now I can burn my logo on, so everyone knows who's messed up the back scene. If you are wondering how to make a logo like this, click on the link at the top and watch my video. Alright, last thing I would like to show you is how I line my drawers with the velvet fabric. I could have used a method called flocking, but I've never done it before and it seems to be quite messy. I cut the inside shapes of drawers that I've copied in step 7 with scissors, then cut a strip of material the same width as the width of drawer and slowly stick it in. The self-adhesive backing is fairly strong and adheres to the untreated wood quite well. Cut off the excess if needed and place the front and back inside as well. It can be a little tricky with drawers that are narrow, but with a bit of practice it goes in no time. And there we have it, my first ever bandsaw box. If you have enjoyed this video, or if you have found it helpful, please let me know down in the comment section, give me a like, share or subscribe, as it motivates me to create more content for you. Thank you all for watching.